My name is Carrie, and welcome to the Makeup Madhouse family. I'm so glad that you guys are here for another makeup challenge. I actually have not worn makeup on my face in a little while, and I'm not going to do my hair today, so the challenge is perfect because it is not going to be on my face. Today's challenge is an arm illusion paint. It's on your forearm here or on the other. I don't what, what are literally the sides of your arms called? Whichever side of your arm that you choose, this side or like this side, you can do whatever you want. Here are a couple examples that I found on Pinterest. Of course, it's great to credit artists. I, I didn't grab everyone's name for these, but um, definitely if you do something inspired by an artist, try and tag them. And I'm going to be doing a combination of two different inspiration photos. Yeah, basically the goal for the Arm Illusion Challenge is to create an illusion makeup that goes with the anatomy of the arm somehow and you're just really pushing illusion to make things look 3D, have a lot of dimension and use contrast for your illusion. If you guys want to join in on the challenge with me, make sure to send me your arm illusion makeups and they will be featured in the next video. There were so many beautiful cut crease makeups that you guys sent me. I love them all so much. Love how creative you guys are getting with it, using a lot of different color, glitter, different things and just being unique and also pushing yourself to try the challenge too. I think that means we are ready to get to the makeup. I'm gonna start by saying I'm gonna be using completely different camera angles today so please bear with me on that. This is a very very good one to start out with a drawing. Honestly half the battle for illusions is figuring out where the depth and dimension is ahead of time so getting it down on this piece of paper first is really going to make my job easier when I'm painting and I won't have to think as much. So like here since this is on top, we're gonna have a shadow to just give it more dimension. And then we can also do one here. So we'll have some shadows. And then all of this is gonna be blacked out. And I might add some honey drips because with anything that's liquid, you can add a lot of highlights and things to make it look fluid. This is so weird to me not filming with my face on camera so I can talk to you guys, but I hope it's okay. So I'm gonna start with a pencil just to map things out. Start drawing some of these. I wanted to keep the skin part of the hexagons. I wanted to keep it skin toned, but we will still be adding makeup onto it. And you can see already I'm varying a little bit from my drawing. This was more just to get the full concept down and then I change it as I go. I am gonna use an orange pencil to start mapping out these lower hexagons just because I like using the pencil instead of paint so I don't have to re-wet my brush or anything. Sometimes I feel like we need more. All right, so it goes from here and then up. I kind of like that. I'm going to do the background yellow first and then I will come back at the end and do all the top, the higher level. So I'm using like a squarish brush to try and fill these in nicely. Use the Mayron Paradise paints. They are water-based paints, so I like to compare it a little bit to watercolors, but not quite. And it is something that when you're trying it for the first time, you just want to mess around with it. It'll take a little while to get used to the consistency. So I did not do a ton of illusion makeup until 2020 and this year also. But it's something that I've realized a lot of people really enjoy seeing it. It's just a very cool makeup to be able to do and learn. Building up as I do details. So right now I'm going to take some dark eyeshadow and just start adding a little bit of shading. And a tip for while you're working. So a lot of times we end up staring at the same makeup for hours and hours. So literally take out your phone and look through your phone and see how the makeup is looking. It, it just gives you a different perspective on it by looking through and seeing where you can fix things. So this is definitely the coolest part about illusions is when you start taking out the negative area. It's going to help me visualize and see everything come together. I decided to switch to the Mayron Edge Black paint because you can already see, look how much darker that is. I decided to get out my phone and record a time lapse while doing this blacking out part. I realized that my light is coming in from here so my shadows are pushed on this side, which means some of my highlights aren't correct, but I'll go back and get them after. Create this shape, and this will help lift it off the top of here. I probably could be using a different brush so that it is blending better. <laughs> now we're going in and adding some really light yellow highlights, and I'm not going all the way into the dark because the highlights will kind of stop there. I can add little tiny touches, 
I want to carefully try and add in another little bit of illusion like the inspiration photo had. Anytime you're painting on top of black with a lighter color, you want to be very careful so it doesn't mix. These extra little honeycombs would not just be flat lines on top, so I'm adding orange next to it and then on the outside here where you would see it. Anytime that you're working in skin tone, you can use a variety of concealers, nude colored pencils, different shades of them to give depth and dimension of whatever skin tones you are. This step is you can clean up any bad edges with your concealer. We're looking pretty cool. Now I'm taking my darker color here and just adding even more dimension. Now I can go through and even add here. If you have an area that you really need to get a lot of coverage on, I just take my beauty blender and my original color and blend it back in. Right here, I'm adding in the skin tone for just like a little more illusion. Could do the same thing over here on the end, like the inside. What else can we do? This little thing here, here, but yeah, now I'm just trying to go around and find as much illusion and like different details and things that I could possibly add in. I was just doing some touching up with some of the black and trying to make things a little bit more precise. Now I'm going to go and bump in any extra highlights. I am going to try and do a little bit of honey drips. Definitely getting toward the end now. I am gonna go in with touches of white. You guys, this is so fun. I keep looking at it in the camera preview there. <laughs> I hope you guys liked watching this video. I know it wasn't as much of me like being able to look at you and talk to you. I don't, I didn't really have any setup where I could do like two cameras currently. This was fun. I definitely think this is something that I can do more of on my arm or on my leg just to like practice painting when I don't feel like painting on my face. I hope you guys join in on the challenge. Make sure to send me your arm illusion makeups. Challenge yourself with it, have fun. I will say overall my painting was not perfect technically. I think the challenge of doing the illusion is very much there and it was fun taking two different inspirations and then merging them together. It's funny recording the end of this with me looking <laughs> to see where my arm is. There she is. I hope you guys had a lot of fun and I can't wait to see what you create also. Make sure you are following on all social media, Makeup Madhouse, so that you guys don't miss out on anything. Uh, I appreciate you all and I hope you have a fantastic week. <laughs>